And boy, there sure is a lot of cherries in the tree today. It's been a good year for cherry trees. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're down here in the lower yard, and we're going to gather some of these wild cherries off the tree today. And <clears throat> Granny Jill's going to make us some jam and some jelly, and maybe even try to make a cobbler out of these. If you're unfamiliar with the wild cherry tree, I'm going to show you what you need to look for and show you how we're going to harvest these berries and then uh, show you a couple things that you may not want to do with them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Now, you can see when, these cherry, when the cherries are ripe, they turn black and then they just simply start falling off the tree. Now, the way I knew these cherries was ready to be picked I've started noticing the past couple of days there's been some crows landing underneath these trees and there will be about six crows laying underneath the bottom of the tree and one crow will jump up on the branches and actually shake the berries out of them. Pretty cool, right? But what you're looking for, again it is a wild fruit tree but it has a nice small pear-shaped leaf kind of serrated on the edges. Okay, and you can see the cherries here. These, these are down on a stem. If I can get this guy separated. There we go. And they just grow out. They do bloom. These trees will bloom a little white flower very early in the spring. And this tree is absolutely loaded this year. To be honest with you, I've never seen this many cherries on this tree before. So again, get this leaf down kind of help you and I'll show you the bark here in a second that'll help identify the tree along with again if you see fruit on them you're probably in the right spot now these things grow all over in the wild and even if you don't have them on your property you can go and search for them like anything else and find them growing and gather yourself up some berries normally takes about a really solid gallon of cherries in order to make yourself some jam or jelly. I don't know anything about the recipe. That's Granny Jill's thing. She She's good with this kind of stuff. Let's see. She's the one that tells me what to do and I just try to help. <laughs> but like I said, you can see that these, these guys are... Now these are not a typical cherry. Very small. Not much bigger than a pea. And that's why it takes so many of these to also make yourself a, a jar of jelly. Let me show you how we're shaking these off the tree and how we're gathering them up. And then we'll talk some more about the tree itself. You want to put these in your bucket? There you go. Two for the pile. I'm going to zoom you guys in there and show you. Like I said, this tree is absolutely covered with them this year. Which is a good thing. It makes it a little easier for us to gather them up. Now if you don't have a tarp or anything like that and you're just simply finding these as they fall off the tree, obviously you can just carry yourself a small bucket and drop them right in your bucket and be on your merry way. Let's see if we can get some of these down on the tarp. Now if you're doing this like I am and climbing up on a ladder, obviously be careful there. And I'm going to try to grab the stronger part of this branch start shaking these berries out of here. We may have to scoot our tarp over a little bit. Okay, now we're going to fold the tarp up and roll the edges and just push those right into the middle. We don't want to step on them. Now even though these cherries are about, about the size of a pea, they do have seeds in them. Like I said, these little guys do have seeds in them. But if you're going to eat them straight off the tree, you have to be careful there. Oh, 
hook these up there and show it you. Look at that. Now, because they're so small, it does take quite a few of these to actually make a quart sized jar of jelly. Now, something else you can do with these, however, most of the time this kind of gets me in trouble. But again, they are pea size, so I can throw them at Granny Jill. <laughs> And have a pretty good time doing it. <laughs> she thinks I'm cute. <laughs> now another thing to watch for if you're grabbing wild cherries, the blackberries are ripening up as well. The cherry trees and the blackberry bushes kind of go hand in hand as far as being ready to pick the fruit. We've got a few more days on a couple of these blackberries here but boy some of them really look good. Okay, so while she's gathering those up, a couple more pointers about this particular tree. Now, if you own cattle and you have a bunch of these branches fall down, you need to pick the branches and the leaves up as quickly as you can because cows love the taste of this. However, once they start eating them, they'll eat so many of them that it can actually kill the cow. So if you're clearing land or something like that and lay one of these trees down and you've got grazing cattle or animals, be extremely careful. The seeds, even for us humans, the seeds in enough quantity has a, a, it causes an acidic reaction to our stomach and the gases in our stomach, and it can poison you. So don't eat the seeds specifically in large quantities, and don't leave the branches or things like that down for your cows. You're going to be gold. Now when you eat the berry itself, uh, it starts off sweet and then has a, a bitter flavor at the end of it but they are tasty all right we're going to move our ladder and see if we can catch to the other side i've got a couple things i want to show you about the bark on this tree now if you've removed a branch from your cherry tree you're going to see the sap start gathering underneath where the tree is healing itself the pioneers used to pick that stuff up and actually chew that for chewing gum so i haven't tried it don't want to taste it <laughs> But I'm just telling you, if you're out in the woods looking for a tasty treat and you need some chewing gum, you may find yourself a cherry tree, okay? Now you can see uh, the cherry tree itself does have a really tight bark. And these trees are really easy to identify growing in the wild. So if you come across one, you're, you're going to have a pretty good idea what you're dealing with. They also use these trees to make some beautiful furniture. Uh, it's a hardwood tree. So the uh, graining in the tree is just absolutely perfect for furniture and custom built things. So there's a lot of uses for these trees. Well, there we go, guys. Again, about 15 minutes into it. She's got her half a gallon of these already sorted out. And you can see, I'll bring them up there and tilt those guys up for the camera. So just another way of using, utilizing something that's growing on our property and I really hope that you have some of these trees on yours. Uh, most of the time these branches are higher off the ground so one thing you can do is just simply bring yourself a 20 foot section of rope, throw the rope up over the branch and bring it down to where you can actually stand on the ground and shake the branches. Drop these things down onto a tarp for yourself and they're just simple to gather up. Okay? Like I said, that's going to make us a really nice jar of jelly. There you go. Now another thing you can do with it, if you mix some of the sap, some of the cherries, and some sugar, you can make a cherry brandy with this stuff. Now I, I don't know the recipe to that, but you know from something that's growing in the yard, there's quite a few uses here, right? Now this particular tree we really didn't think this tree was going to survive. Uh, about seven years ago, we had a really big windstorm come through and broke the top out of the tree. And I mean, it broke the, the whole main section of the tree out. So I went ahead and uh, finished cutting it out of the top and we just left the tree to see if it was going to make it. And now you can't even tell the top's gone out of it. And it's, it's just growing fa fabulously, looks great. Well, that's going to wrap our video up. 
just a few pointers about the cherry tree. Again, excellent furniture. And for you guys that have your uh, portable sawmills and things like that, you already know. I mean, this, this is good looking wood. But <clears throat> some other uses you can get for it. Now, if you're out picking these things, be careful. Again, don't, uh, don't get these in the way of your cattle. Uh, don't consume too many of the seeds, and you're going to be okay. But uh, if you chew some of that tree sap for gum, put it in the comments. I'd like to hear about that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I really hope some of this information helps you. I'll see you on the next one. I just see a yellow jacket flying around the uh, camera there. So that's another thing to be careful of is bees in this area because they like the taste of these things too. I'll see you on the next one.